this demonstration will show how to build a 3D topographic model with texture map using Agisoft Photoscan Professional and the demonstration um, will work with photography that was taken by Ed Nissen and his colleagues over the El Mayor Cucupa surface rupture. This was an earthquake that occurred in 2010 in northern Mexico and the photographs were taken from a balloon flying with a, a camera that was taking the pictures um, every few seconds. And so you see them here in this folder. So let's go to Photoscan. And uh, the main place where we'll work is under the workflow. This is the main control, the main activity happens here. So let's just add the folder. You want to just select that folder and then it's going to take all the camera, all the pictures that are in there and create a separate kind of camera from each one. So they're loaded in. Now if we can look over here on the left, you can double click and see one of them. So let's go to the first step would be align photos. Now this is an important point. It's, it's don't be too uh, hasty or, or greedy in the sense of trying to do everything with the highest quality. It's really much better to make sure that you can get through the whole workflow fairly quickly with lower quality and then come back through progressively increasing the quality. So let's try medium quality, generic pre-pair selection. That means let it uh, figure out which pictures match. If your pictures have good GPS um, information in embedded, then you can try the, the reference. So just let it go. Okay, once the first step is complete alignment, what you can see is we've got a what's called the sparse cloud, uh, and this has been produced um, with the structure for motion technique. So now let's continue. Let's save the project in case we crash it, uh, it'd be good to uh, pick up where we left off. One thing you can also do is if you go to view, show hide items, show cameras, we can see where the, the balloon was, where the camera was. You see this is a, a multi-level flight and you also see the orientation. So each one of these blue squares is the focal plane of the camera with the line being the normal to it or the view direction. You can also sometimes uh, view this um, trackball kind of just lets you sort of see the middle and you can grab these little rotation directions but sometimes it gets in the way. Okay, let's continue. So the next thing we're going to do is now that we have the the sparse cloud and we've we've figured out where the cameras are and where the main what the main structure is, we can densify our model with this dense cloud uh, approach. Okay, we've <clears throat> finished our calculation for the dense cloud. Let's uh, have a look at it. So you can see it looks like a complete a continuous surface, but it's actually just the points. Let's turn off the cameras and so we can zoom in. You see there are a few holes in the the vegetation, but we've got a pretty good 3D model already. It's important that to note, we're not georeferencing this, but you could. Um, but you can export the point cloud even now if you if you wanted to export points, and you could export as an LAS file, and then view it in other software. For example, the uh, point uh, cloud compare. 
but you see your only choice at the moment would be that would be meaningful would be in, in a, a kind of arbitrary coordinate system. Okay, so let's continue with our uh, sort of trip through the workflow. The next major step is to build the mesh, and so this will basically calculate kind of a best fitting triangular mesh through these data, and uh, from that, for example, a uh, digital elevation model could be produced. Now, there, uh, importantly, this arbitrary or height field, this choice of the surface type is important. Arbitrary is the, the most general and would be the case for a really very much three-dimensional object like a sculpture, for example. The height field assumes that one of the dimensions is a lot uh, smaller than the other two, like uh, in, in this case. And this allows the calculations to go quite a bit faster. So let's try this. The source data should be the dense cloud. Face count, this is how many triangles. Medium's probably okay. And let's run it. Okay, so now we've uh, finished our calculation of the mesh. So let's view it. You see as more uh, things are computed, we are able to view more of them. So Let's look at a sh the, if you click the shaded mesh, it has a rough coloring from the point cloud, but this is not what we will want. We'll get a much better view of this texture after the next step. But let's look at the wireframe. You can really see what we mean by the mesh here. And so it doesn't go through every single point, but goes through, produces sort of optimal size triangles to represent the surface given the constraints that you uh, specified in terms of number of triangles. And here would be a solid one, sort of artificially illuminated mesh. So let's save it. And let's run now the, the texture. And so this is uh, basically going to produce the best fitting kind of mosaic of those images that then can be stretched onto this this mesh, the model of the site. And so main things, I just use generic, blending mode, mosaic, texture size, this has to do with how much can sort of fit in the memory of the computer. So you can experiment with this multiplier here. You usually want to keep it pretty small unless you have a, a real monster machine. Whoops, you can see not enough memory. So that shows that the multiplier I chose for the texture was too high. So let's not be so uh, aggressive. Okay, so we've got our texture calculated. So now if we display the textured mesh, you can see it really almost photorealistic now. And again, this is different than the dense colored uh, point cloud, um, but uh, sort of equally shows this really rich um, character of the, the site with the very nice textured uh, imagery tightly wrapped onto that that meshed uh, model. Let's save it. And now, if you if you were to do the georeferencing, you would uh, carry on with uh, building the digital elevation model, building the ortho mosaic, and then you could uh, export them. But you see, because we don't have a georeference or or uh, those haven't been built, we're not able to select that as a choice.